Well, uh, Premier Doug Ford and Energy Minister Todd Smith are making an announcement at the site of the Darlington nuclear plant. Let's listen live as the Premier speaks. In creating more jobs because it's no secret that manufacturing is a major part of Ontario's economy going forward and that it's going to require a stable and affordable supply of electricity. We are set to be a global leader in building electric vehicles from start to finish, manufacturing clean steel, building rechargeable batteries, and providing the critical minerals those batteries and reactors like this one need to operate. Ontario's future requires more power, and we must be ready. We have to be innovative, and we have to be bold. That's what's happening here at Darlington. Today is more proof that along with the partners standing next to us, our government is getting it done. We're building Ontario ge to generations to come. But my friends, we know there's more to do. We must stay focused and we can't take anything for granted. As we navigate global economic uncertainty, our government has been hard at work building an economy that can weather any storm, an economy that never loses sight of what's most important, helping people succeed, helping workers succeed. That's the start, it starts with creating the economic conditions that attract investments in growth and good jobs. We've cut red tape to reduce the cost of doing business in Ontario by $7 billion annually. We've kept taxes for people and businesses low. We're investing in skilled trades and a workforce that's prepared for the jobs of today and tomorrow. We're building roads and highways like Highway 413 and the Bradford Bypass. And we're making investments to improve the province's competitive advantage and ensure that Ontario remains the greatest place anywhere to live, work and raise a family. And while the world faces economic uncertainty and our challenges with inflation are not over, one thing I have complete confidence in are the people of Ontario. They are no harder working people on earth. And I know that together we will accomplish incredible things. Together we will build Ontario. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. Okay, we will now take questions from the media. Just a reminder, it's one question, one follow-up. Okay. Hi, Premier Siobhan from CTV. Hi, Siobhan. Uh, we've heard some concerns from councillors in King Township about the Greenbelt lands that you're looking at for development of housing. That's land that they were hoping to use for development of the new South Lake Hospital. Don't you need to add health care that we know is badly needed in that area before you grow the population there? Well, that's actually in, in our plans. I know uh, South Lake is putting uh, together plans, submitting into the Ministry of Health, and that's one of our priorities. Folks, there's never been more money spent on infrastructure in hospitals in the history of this country, in the history of this province. We're spending over $40 billion, and that number is growing, on 50 sites across Ontario. There isn't a region in this province that's not either getting a massive expansion or getting a brand new hospital. So that's, uh, that's something that we're going to be looking at, and I know the people of Durham uh, are also looking forward to a new hospital. I don't know if you've paid attention to this, but what's been happening at York Memorial Collegiate in, in Toronto, it's in your nephew's riding. Yeah. Um, a lot of school violence there, uh, concerns from parents that their kids aren't safe. We're hearing the same from staff as well. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on what you've seen, what you think might need to happen there, and if there's any room for the province to intervene at all. Well, we always leave that up to the, the school boards. Um, we don't have jurisdiction to dictate to the school boards what needs to be done. But I'll, I'll tell you, when if there's any uh, violent crimes, if there's any gun crimes happening, this goes back to the federal government. They're weak when it comes to uh, making sure that when someone gets charged, that there's mandatory sentences out there. We have to look at bail reform. We have JPs, Justices of Pieces, Peace, that are letting these uh, violent, violent uh, people out in two days. There's no secret. I have three son-in-laws that are police officers. I talk to police officers every single day. Their biggest frustration, there's a shooting in the neighborhood, they catch the bad guy, and guess what? They let him out on the street the next day or the next two days. That is absolutely ridiculous. We need to make sure that our communities are safe. We need to be tough when it comes to the, the laws of this country. and. We know that the federal government controls the criminal code, so they need to toughen up rather than uh, being weak and letting these people back out on the streets and say they're going to be reformed, and there they are, they're shooting up the streets again. 
Uh, Alistair McNamara, Durham Radio News. Uh, Hi, Premier, in a uh, report by the Auditor General this week, she says the provincial electricity subsidies uh, are failing to reduce the root causes of the high prices. She says they simply shift a portion of the costs from rate payers to taxpayers. Uh, how would you respond to that? Well, that's a good uh, question for the minister. Thank you very much, Premier, and thank you for the question. Uh, clearly, what we're dealing with is the hangover uh, from the Liberal era, which drove electricity prices through the roof. Uh, Sole-sourced contracts uh, that were way over the market price uh, that we're still dealing with today. You all remember the solar contracts that were signed at 80 cents a kilowatt hour when facilities like this were producing reliable electricity, clean, efficient electricity at eight, nine cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, as a result, what we've done uh, to ensure that we can see the growth and stability in our energy sector again and investment coming back to our province is uh, put forward a comprehensive electricity plan. Uh, that comprehensive electricity plan coupled with the Ontario electricity rebate is ensuring that manufacturers in our province are saving 15 to 17 percent on their electricity bills every day. Is there a cost that comes with that? Absolutely. But there is a lot to be gained with that and we're seeing that in the multi-billion dollar investments that are coming in our EV manufacturing sector. You know, we saw under the previous Liberal government auto factories uh, leaving for other jurisdictions and those manufacturing jobs leaving for other uh, jurisdictions. Now we have those EV platforms coming to places like General Motors in Oshawa here in the Durham region and many others across the province. EV battery manufacturing facilities coming back. Electrification in our steel making processes. All of this is going to require more electricity and we have a plan to ensure that uh, we are providing that electricity for future investment and population growth in our province and this small modular the reactor is one piece of that puzzle. And just to follow up, uh, Minister, we uh, talk about expanding electricity. Uh, what about uh, lowering the costs in the province? Uh, any plans on that? Well, we are making sure that electricity rates remain stable. What we saw under the long-term electricity plan uh, from the Liberal government was uh, increases of 7, 8 and 9 percent year over year through the end of the decade. We're ensuring with the programs that we have in place uh, under the guidance of our Premier and my colleagues who are here today that we have stable electricity prices and a matter of fact uh, well below uh, the rate of inflation every year and ensuring a reliable, affordable, clean, safe electricity system for the residents of our promised, uh, province, those who are looking to in invest in our province. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this will be the last question. Good morning, Premier Liam Casey with the Canadian Press. Good morning. Um, the federal environment says Ottawa will not provide disaster compensation where a province deliberately allows housing to be built in areas prone to flooding. Stephen Gibault says some of the lands where housing is being proposed in Ontario are in floodplains. Will you be building homes in floodplains in the Greenbelt that you just opened up? No, and I encourage the federal minister to do his research. Uh, it's the responsibility of any builder, no matter where we build, to make sure that they protect any floodplains. And uh, I just wish you'd do a little more research on that. And maybe I'll call them and inform them what's going on. What do you think of uh, Danielle Smith's Sovereignty Act? Well, that, that's up to Alberta. I'm not going to get involved in uh, Alberta politics. And uh, I've had an opportunity to speak to Danielle, I think, once or twice. So I don't interfere in other provinces' uh, jurisdictions. Okay. Thanks, everyone. That's great. Thanks, everyone. Take care. All right, that is uh, Premier Doug Ford out in Darlington today uh, talking about uh, some more nuclear energy, uh, sort of working on uh, getting some more power into the grid there with Energy Minister Todd Smith as well and also taking some questions from reporters.